Hey guys, you're watching Tech Radar. I'm Basil, and today we're going to be talking about the Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. After a month with these two phones, how do the design and the screens stack up? Well, you've got two choices. You can opt for the smaller Pixel 2 with its 5 inch OLED display. It fits more comfortably in the hand, but it has a fair bit more bezel with its traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Or you can opt for the Pixel 2 XL with its 18 by 9 aspect ratio, longer form, but it is fair bit bigger. Six inches of POLED display make it uh, more imposing in the hand. Still, these two phones do feel relatively comfortable. They have metal bodies, but they have a plastic coating. Doesn't necessarily feel super expensive, but it adds a little bit of warmth to the metal. They're not super, super grippy. And in terms of colors, I definitely say if you're getting the Pixel 2, look at the blue one. And if you're getting the 2XL, opt for the Panda variant. Both of these phones have the same connectivity features. They've got USB-C at the base. They have no headphone jacks, but they do ship with an adapter, which is a good thing, and obviously volume and the power buttons. Around the back of the phones, the top part, you've got a glass plate. And this is kind of traditional Pixel style. The camera lens is a little bit bumped out, but it's kind of good in a way because at least it's separate to the glass back. So if you do drop the phone and the glass back breaks, that doesn't mean that the camera protective glass is broken too. Both of these phones are IP67 water and dust resistant and they can take a dunk, but they also feel relatively durable from an aesthetic point of view. After a month with both, neither of them have scuffed. They haven't muddied too much, the black variants, but if you do opt for a white one, there's a chance uh, the color may tarnish a little bit. Moving on to the screen, since OLED technology across both, that's organic light emitting diode, but you've got a POLED display made by LG on the XL. And that has seen a few issues over the last few weeks come to light. For starters, you've got really, really mediocre viewing angles by comparison to other OLED displays from Samsung, for example. And in addition, you also have reports of burn-in. What burn-in is, it's an image kind of ghosting, lingering after the beat. And that happens when it's on screen. The Google interface in its stock form doesn't really compensate for OLED displays tendencies to create burn-in. Now, should you be worried about this? Potentially, if you're gonna be having a lot of screen on time. Burn-in isn't something new. It's on all OLED displays, and OLED displays have been around for a while and are still the preferred display for most manufacturers. But the reason it's pronounced on the Google Pixel 2 XL is probably because the user interface hasn't been designed to minimize the navigation bar, so it appears all the time unlike with the LG V13 and Samsung Galaxy Note 8, for example. And so you always get that bar at the bottom, which can create that burned in navigation set. If you're looking head on at the Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, they're a little bit more muted than other screens from Samsung with OLED technology. They are fair screens, but they are definitely are not class leading. The Pixel 2 XL is significantly warmer. So even when you hold them both side by side, the colors just don't stack up. So the design generally gets a thumbs up, but the Pixel 2 is very, very bezel heavy. And the Pixel 2 XL obviously has that screen issue. And so as a result, while you're paying flagship buck for these phones, around 649 pounds at a base price for the Pixel 2 and 799 pounds for the Pixel 2 XL, it doesn't necessarily feel like off the bat, you're getting a flagship design and screen experience. When it comes to the user interface of both, they are identical. And what that means is Android 8 out of the box. That's the newest version of Android, newest security features. You've also got some cool UI features that are exclusive to Pixel series devices. For example, from the lock screen, you can see what song's playing. It's just gonna automatically listen to the ambient music and detect it and tell you in that kind of really cool OLED always on display. What you also have is a little indication at the top of your home screen telling you about your emails, your media, meetings and a few key bits of information around transport and stuff like that. Google said they will be developing this over the coming months. So it's really nice with the Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL to be at the forefront of Android and the technology surrounding its development. The only downside to stock Android is you haven't got any of the bells and whistles that some other manufacturers might apply. For example, Samsung with the S Pen enables a whole load of integration. Huawei allows you to quickly organize your home screens. You can get rid of your apps tray. You can bring it back. Now you can always install a custom launcher, but chances are if you're getting this phone, you'll want the stock Android experience. So just know that it is good, but it isn't quite as tweakable as others out there. When it comes to multimedia, both of these phones have stereo front firing speakers and they perform really well. The Pixel 2 XL has better speakers, slightly rounder sound. 
but the Pixel 2 for the size is probably best in class. What you can also expect is decent video playback. Everything looks fine on the 16x9 Pixel 2, 18x9 Pixel 2 XL. There is no HDR10 support, interestingly, across either device. And the colors are, as a result, generally more muted than on the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, for example. You'll wanna be careful of storage. It's available with 64 gigabytes as standard at a base level, and you can opt for the 120 8 gigabyte variant of either device. Now, neither of these are micro SD expandable. So if you want to have loads and loads of movies, tons of games, then that isn't going to be something that you'll be able to do. It's also worth noting with regards to the storage that you get unlimited cloud backups for all your photos and movies at full resolution. So that's pretty excellent through Google Drive. So if you're invested in the Google ecosystem, getting this phone will be an investment, not just in a device, but in a cloud storage solution as well. Gaming across the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL is really good, largely owing to those front-firing stereo speakers. But let's not forget about the power under the hood here. You've got Snapdragon 835 processors paired with 4 gigabytes of RAM, which means you're going to be able to play any game that you throw at it. Now, while there's none of the 120 hertz frame rate and all that of the Razer phone, for example, you get a similar amount of power. And those OLED displays, despite not being great off-angle, look really nice and deep head-on, which is exactly how you will tend to be playing games. Geekbench scored around 6,200, whereas Antutu around 160,000. So that means whether it is gaming you're doing or just swiping the UI, multitasking, split-screen multitasking like a maniac, you shouldn't be having any issues. And neither should you be having any issues with battery life. Now, in the first few days, we found that the battery life wasn't great on either of these phones. But a month in, and they're comfortably lasting a full day, both of them. You've got a 2,700 milliamp cell in the regular Pixel. Too. I mean, that's bigger than the 8 Plus, and the iPhone 8 Plus has a much bigger screen, and you've got 3,000, over 3,500 milliamps in the Pixel 2 XL, so it's little wonder the battery life is indeed so good. Moving on to the cameras of the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL, and this is a real high point. No dual cameras in sight around the back, but the rear camera is best in class when it comes to pointing, shooting, and taking your picture. And the front camera is really good as well. This is specifically for pictures. For video, it isn't quite as good in low light as some of the key competitors, but photos, just if you want an automatic camera that absolutely slams a competition, this is it. Point shoot and the auto HDR technology Google applies is great. You can also apply a background blur effect too, which works very, very well for there not being two cameras on here. Now that's exceptionally good for portraits because Google's algorithms are able to detect faces and map out the detail around ears and everything better than a lot of other dual camera devices around. Even in low light, while not necessarily best in class in every situation, overall the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL managed to deliver at least the most pleasing shot, even if there's still a bit of grain left over. There's optical image stabilization and electric image stabilization combining that 12 megapixel rear sensor. And so video is stable, but it really is low light that creates a fair bit of grain. And there have been some units that have had some really bad hiss on the microphones. So Google said they'll be fixing that with a software update. Fingers crossed that, that lands soon. It affected our unit too. If you want to know more about how the Pixel 2 XL's rear camera performs, check out our blind comparison between that the Note 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, and the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Right, now wrapping up with a selfie camera on the Pixel 2 series, and it's good. Eight megapixels takes a decent amount of detail in, but it doesn't necessarily highlight every single port, which in my books is only a good thing. So in a nutshell, the Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL are really good phones, but they are far from perfect, and they may be too far from perfect for you, given the prices Google is charging for both of them. The design is good across both, but nothing mind-blowing, and the screens have some real flaws across both. You haven't got a huge amount of resolution on the smaller variant, and you also have some inherent problems with the viewing angles and with burn-in on the larger Pixel 2 XL. The user interface is a stock Android, and 
that means you're getting an unadulterated Google experience, excellent app support, and also the multimedia jobs, thanks to the app support, is really good. You can play back any video that you're going to throw at it, and the speakers on here front firing on both devices sound really, really decent. What's more, with power under the hood, Snapdragon 835 and 4 gigabytes of RAM, gaming is so, so good. You're not going to cover those speakers. And the only thing that might irk you is a lack of 3.5 mil headphone jack. In addition, there is no SD card storage, but you do have excellent cloud solutions from Google with great battery life across both. So if you can get past the lack of SD card slot, the lack of 3.5 mm headphone jack and a few screen issues, one thing that you do know you will be getting with either of these devices is best in class camera capabilities. So that's what we thought about the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL one month into using both of these flagship Google phones. Thanks for watching TechRadar.